What's up, wrestling fans? Richard Boudreaux here. Welcome to a brand new edition of Kayfabe Kickout Audio for August 15, 2013 for kayfabekickout.com, putting the pro back in pro wrestling. Uh, today's show, uh, my very special guest is Michael Kingston, who is the project uh, coordinator for Headlocked, uh, The Last Territory, which is a uh, comic book that currently has a uh, Kickstarter campaign uh, to get it off the ground. Uh, Michael, how's it going? Uh, very good. Thanks for having me. you're very welcome. So, um, Headlocked, uh, The Last Territory. Uh, so what, uh, what is this comic book all about? Um, what's the storyline, uh, the characters involved, uh, the other writers? So what's, what's the deal? Um, Headlocked is the story of a theater major in college who falls in love with wrestling and it takes over his life. He quits school and it's sort of his journey from the moment that he falls in love with wrestling, you know, through the wrestling business, you know, trying to break in, learn the business. Um, it's sort of, you know, like a cable drama style story. Um, you know, kind of the girl gets off the bus in Hollywood kind of story. But at the same time, you know, as he learns the business, we're sort of learning it with him. And examining it sort of through the eyes of somebody who's geared to think about art and is a performance artist himself to try to give it, uh, I guess, a different, uh, just a different look at things. Excellent. Uh, this, you know, this sounds like a sounds like a very uh, interesting um, comic. So, um, so this, like you said, so this comic book is going to be basically behind the scenes. Aspect aspects of pro wrestling, like how you know you start basically start from you know the bottom of the barrel and work your way up to be you know to be a world champion. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, we're going. I mean, right from I mean from the moment that he was a fan. I mean, if you you know, I mean, we want it to be completely accessible to anybody. Like the only thing you have to know about wrestling is basically what it is to be able to follow and appreciate the book, and you know the education. I guess kind of comes along with the story, so. You know, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be hard for anybody to be able to pick it up and, and enjoy it because, uh, you know, I mean, at the at the heart of it, it's just a story about a kid who's chasing his dream and sort of the the things that you know, the ups and downs that go along with that, the sort of self doubt that I think that everybody goes through, and I think everybody can relate to that. I mean, you don't have to be a wrestling fan to, you know, to get something out of the book. There's a little something for everybody. Okay, so that was going to be that was going to be my next question. Uh, next question. So, so like you said, you don't necessarily have to be a pro wrestling fan to in, to enjoy this comic. So, do you think this comic will bring in uh, new fans uh, to professional wrestling? I mean, it's, I think if people are uh, are open about it, I mean, I've sold the book to people at shows who uh, you know who who are interested in the story the way I laid it out, and. Uh, you know, and they've come back to me and like, you know, I never really thought about wrestling the way you described it. I mean, I think that's the the part about fr- the wrestling is, is, you know, it's very polarizing and people generally have strong opinions one way or the other. And a lot of times, I think people that have negative opinions about wrestling, a lot of them haven't watched it. And some of them just, they just inherit that sort of, that attitude and they don't really have a factual basis, or there's nothing really behind it. It's just something that comes with it. So, you know, I think we like to shake things up a little bit and give people a little bit of a different perspective. And, you know, it, it has happened on occasion. And I hope, uh, you know, my, my hope is that wrestling fans read the book first, and then maybe, you know, we get a little word of mouth, and people are like, oh, this is good, you should read it. And, uh, you know, maybe we, uh, maybe we change a few minds, or at least open a few eyes. Right, so is this is this comic book going to be uh, more on the 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 entertainment aspects of professional wrestling that most fans know of, or is it going to be more of a more of an old school feel to it? Um, well, actually, with the with this particular uh, this particular arc that we're funding through the Kickstarter, it's called the Last Territory, and uh, the idea is that he's in the last sort of old school territory right um that's based around like a, a very regional superstar who was a uh, he was a high school football in texas he was a he won the he was the guy who won the, the high school football championship and it's such a big deal out of texas and out of school he sort of became a wrestler and then just became 
you know, a hero, but it doesn't mean anything anywhere else, you know. So he stays in this, he stayed in this one area his whole life. And uh, because it's the last territory that really draws well, the sort of WWF style, you know, group in the book sends their developmental talent down there. So you have sort of a mashup of the old school territory system and then sort of modern corporate wrestling politics all kind of colliding at different levels, which I think will make for a lot of different, uh, it'll, it'll give you a lot of different views and a lot of different angles, but uh, I think it'll also uh, make for a pretty fun story. Wow. Uh, that sounds, uh, that sounds great. Um, you know, I, I really hope this, really hope this project gets off the ground. And from what you've just told me, uh, I think this, this comic will be a fantastic um, lesson for uh, younger wrestling fans that who may not be familiar with the old territory system, you know, back in the sixties and seventies and eighties before Vince McMahon basically enveloped the professional wrestling world. So I think it'll be not only will it be a great read, I think, but it'll, it'll also be a great history lesson for younger fans. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and I think that's one of the things that I've always loved about wrestling is the sort of just the, the scope of it. I mean, it's different all over the world. I mean, obviously it's, it's different in Japan, it's different in Mexico, it's different in Britain. And I think that, you know, people in the United States have such a narrow view of what wrestling is because WWE just is such a dominant brand. And uh, I think, I think it, I think it would be, I think it's, I just want, I'd like fans to like wrestling more and not just WWE, I guess. There's a lot of people who I feel are just WWE fans and if you took the whole roster away and started it fresh with you know an entire new roster i think people would just still watch it watch that um but uh you know i think i I just want people to i guess have more of an appreciation for wrestling in general absolutely i mean uh i've always said that as well that there are like myself and you included there are pro wrestling fans and then there are wwe fans and um you know i hope that WWE fans will, you know, if they read this comic, they'll they'll get a better get a better sense of what, you know, the the overall scope of professional wrestling. That it's not just about the WWE. That you know, professional wrestling has been around for literally probably 100 150 years. If you go all the way back to the Carney you know Carney days of Tootsmont and those those type of guys, and you know, I I think that um, I think it's going to be you know, I think it's going to be great that, uh, you know, I, I I really hope that, you know, younger wrestling fans will be able to at least appreciate what professional wrestling was was like before the WWE just basically took over. And I think that's really what the, what the point of the project is at the end of the day. I mean, I don't, uh, I mean, the money that we're trying to raise for the Kickstarter is going to pay for full-time, all the full-time artists on the book and then printing and shipping. Like me personally, like I won't get a dime of that money. I don't even, you know, it's not anything I care about. Like, I'm not, I'm not really in this to, to make money. Like, I just want to tell this story as long as I can. But, I mean, it's a passion project for me and for the people involved. Um, our interior artist is a professional wrestler from New Zealand. We have a bunch of different wrestlers that are contributing art and stories. And everybody that's associated with the book is passionate about wrestling and passionate about comics. And, you know, both of those art forms. And, you know, I think that that will... You know, if you if you see the work that we've done in the past and you see the work that we're putting out now, I think our passion comes across, you know, in everything that we do. Excellent. And we're going to get into uh, the 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 all-star cast of uh, professional uh, wrestlers that are contributing to this comic. And like uh, like Michael said, uh, wrestling fans, uh, if you go to Kickstarter.com and just type up Headlocked, The Last Territory in the search bar, then the campaign will come up. And it's close to 250 uh, backers thus far, and it's probably what maybe ninety ninety percent funded at this time. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's, technically I think it's eighty nine, but yeah, we're right uh, right on the cusp of ninety. And there's still and there's still lots of time uh, lots of time left, wrestling fans, like thirty days, and you can you can uh, donate any amount five, ten, fifteen, twenty. You can donate up to a hundred dollars, and you get some fantastic stuff in return. So, um, how was this? How was this project started, and what made you want to create a comic book? 
Um, did you like? Did you think about creating like a maybe like a video instead, or uh, you know what, what, uh, you know what made you want to uh, to create a comic book series? I've uh, I've been a wrestling fan since I was eight years old, and I've been a comic comic book fan for about just as long. Um, and when I decided I wanted to start writing comics. You know, one of the things, I guess, as a comic book fan that had always frustrated me is whenever wrestling comic books had come out, they would be extremely disappointing. Um, You could tell that they were produced by people that either didn't know about wrestling or didn't care about wrestling. Um, And I think a lot of times when you see wrestling projects that come out, like, I mean, Ready to Rumble comes to mind, or like Mm -hmm. that show The Mullets that was on UPN. I mean, there's a certain derision in the project that you can feel because it's created by people that are just trying to cash in on, you know, a hot wave of, of business. And you could tell that, you know, you can just, you can feel it in the product. You can feel the derision, like, Oh, these guys are idiot wrestling fans. And so when I decided I wanted to write comics, I, the first project I thought about doing was doing a wrestling comic that I think that I would want to read as a wrestling fan that treats wrestling with respect, that treats wrestlers with respect, and wrestling fans with respect. And, you know, it's sort of been, uh, you know, it's it's been difficult getting it off the ground in some ways just because it's different. I mean, it's not a superhero book, and it's not a licensed wrestling book. We don't have support of any major promotions or any major publishers. But, uh, you know, we've built a pretty strong grassroots fan base out of it, just, you know, going to shows and talking to people and, you know, showing what we're about. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there when uh, when you commented that uh, you know it's I can imagine a, a project of this magnitude was was hard to get off the ground because in 2013 there are so many you know if if this was say 1989 where comics were really prevalent in the world then it, the project would have wouldn't have probably had as much many snags as it as it did now but you know in 2013 you have so many other options that. You know, comic books kind of went went by the wayside for a while, but they seem they seem to have made a comeback. And you know, I mean, you can see that in San Diego Comic Con, and and you know, there's a lot of wrestling fans and comic book fans that, including myself, that read comics uh, online. And in you know, I, I have a, a a big collection of of you know hard copy comic books. So um, you know, I I think. Like I said, this sounds like a like a fantastic comic, and I, I think wrestling, like most wrestling fans, are going to enjoy it. And uh, and um, so I think you know I think it's I think it's going to be great. So, well, thanks for that. Oh, you're welcome. So, uh, let's talk about uh, how you attract the attention of probably, well, no, probably about it. Like the, one of the uh, the most well known. Uh, names of professional wrestling, uh, Jerry the King Lawler, uh, to be the uh, to do the artwork for the comic. Like, how did he? Uh, how did he jump on board? Um, it's, it's actually, it's the strangest thing. You know, I I put out my very first issue. Um, you know, and I was I was selling it crazy at shows. And I was doing great, and you know, but you just as an independent, you get such little retailer and distribution support. So right. I knew I had to do something to raise my profile. And I knew Jerry was an artist, so, uh, you know, I just, I emailed him through his website. It was the silliest thing, and I forgot I did it after I did it. It was such a long shot. And maybe about a week later, I got an email back, and uh, he was like, send me some books. So I sent him some books, and then he called me a week after that, and he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And um, he's done a couple covers for us, and we do conventions together. Um you know, it was his dream to be a wrestling comic book cover artist before he became a wrestler. Um, so, you know, he loves to do art, and I think that was his first real love. Um, he's a huge Superman fan, and uh, I guess I just, uh, you know, I asked him first, I guess. Wow, that's great. I mean, that's <laughs> just goes to show you, you know, a little, little perseverance, and all you have to do is just contact these people, reach out to them, and... You know, like some wrestling fans are cynical and probably would have wouldn't even thought to have contacted a, a man like Jerry Lawler. You know, he's heavily involved in, in the WWE, and but you know, you took the risk and you contacted him, and it, it, it definitely panned out. And I've seen Jerry Lawler's work, and he's an absolutely fantastic artist. And it's 
you know, it's really hard to draw comic book art. I mean, me, myself, um, you know, I can look at something and, and, and sketch it, but I can't draw comic book art, you know, freehand. I mean, that's an, that's, you know, that is a, you know, in an art form in itself. I mean, you've seen, uh, comic book artists like Stan Lee and, uh, you know, Steve Ditko and throughout the, throughout the decades. And, you know, I've seen Jerry Lawler's work and it's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I've seen the, the stills on the, uh, the Kickstarter campaign and, you know, it, you know, it's, it's absolutely great that, you know, Jerry Lawler's on board with this project. I think one of the, one of the amazing things about it is he can do so many different styles. I mean, I've seen him do a paint, you know, I saw him do a painting that you'd swear was by Frank Frazetta but then I saw him draw Superman in the U.S. form. was drawn by Kurt Swan. I mean, he's got such a range of ability, and I think it's amazing. And one of the coolest things ever was, you know, I got to watch him paint the first cover. Um, you know, not terribly glamorous, but it was in a hotel room in Newburgh, New York. Um, and you know, he was working in indie. He was working a like a double shot uh, on the indies, and just you know, in between his work, he was just you know painting away and it was amazing you know i was just sitting there watching him and like some of the other wrestlers that were on the card would come in and peek at him watch him sit down for a little it was uh it was really cool it was one of the just one of those like surreal moments where you're like wow is this, is this really happening right now yeah absolutely i could i could imagine that must have been uh you know a, a great thrill for you and you know when you commented that you know he's such a diverse artist he really is and one of the things that that stands out in my mind about Jerry Lawler's artwork is uh, I'm sure you remember, you know, his brief feud uh, with the ultimate warrior, uh, you know, in the mid nineties when warrior came back and that picture of the warrior that he, that he, 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 he drew. And uh, you remember the, the segment when, uh, when, when Lawler, when he smashed it over warrior's head, I mean, that was such a, that was such a fantastic piece of artwork. And uh, you know, when I had heard that Jerry Lawler was doing the artwork for, you know, for headlocked, you know, I was really excited about that. It's an interesting story about Jerry, but when they did the double Undertaker thing with uh, Brian Lee, um, before I guess they eventually had had like sort of fake sleeves made up for him to mock, you know, to ape the Undertaker's tattoos. But the first time that he went out, they had to have Jerry hand draw the Undertaker's sleeves on Brian Lee's arms. Wow! Which uh, I can only imagine what that uh, what that entailed. But uh, I just, yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think he's an amazing guy, and he's a, he's a great person, and I wouldn't really have half of what I've achieved without, you know, having him there to get people to at least take notice of what I've been doing. Wow, that's, that's, I, I had no idea that uh, Jerry Lawler did that for, uh, for Brian Lee, but I could, I could totally, totally see that, because, you know, like, like we've said, like, Jerry Lawler's an absolutely fantastic artist, and, um, for, like I said, wrestling fans, for those of you that have never checked out, you know, Jerry Lawler's uh, artwork. You, you know, like I said, you can go to the, the the Kickstarter campaign for Headlocked, and there are some stills on there. Absolutely, you know, fantastic artwork by uh, Jerry Lawler. And as you said, uh, Michael, you know, Jerry Lawler is a big comic book fan, a big Superman fan. So, um, you know, you know, as I said, I think it's great that you know he's he was able to uh, to jump on board for this project. So let's talk about the other big name uh, contributors to this. Um, comic book, uh, some very well-known uh, professional wrestlers as well. Uh, yeah, we got uh, Rob Van Dam, uh, Shane Helms, and Christopher Daniels are going to be contributing a couple short stories to the book. And uh, we have Ken Anderson, Beth Phoenix, and uh, Sin Bodhi are going to be contributing some art to the book. Um, one of the sort of ideas behind the book it, uh, obviously is the main character being a theater actor and sort of examining the craft of wrestling is the, the idea of wrestling as an art form. So having wrestlers contribute art to the book, just, you know what I mean? It just kind of furthers the theme and uh, really kind of hammers it home. Absolutely. And I mean, and contributor contributors of this, you know, of this magnitude, you know, the, not just the number of contributors, but some of the, the biggest, you know, well-known names of professional wrestling, as you said, Ken Anderson, uh, formerly Ken Kennedy, WWE, Sin Bodhi, and when he was Kizarni in WWE, Christopher Daniels is a huge comic book fan, Rob Van Dam, uh, Beth Phoenix, and Shane Helms. I mean, this, you know, this is something that's not, 
you know, it's not heard of very often that a project, you know, is able to bring together, you know, this many big stars in pro wrestling. Um, well, and it's funny because just over the years, I've just met them all at different conventions and stuff. Mostly, you know, most of them are there as fans and they come across my table and check out my work. And I guess I've been fortunate enough that, you know, they, they've liked what I was doing and they've all offered support, you know. And when I decided I wanted to do the, uh, the Kickstarter, I thought this would be the, uh, you know, the way to do it, to just try to come out with all guns blazing and just try to get people to look our way for a second. You know, it's so hard to get people's attention. Um, and there's actually, I have more people that are lined up for when we do our next book. Um, I have other wrestlers that are, uh, you know, going to contribute some stuff. So it's, uh, I mean, I feel very fortunate that, they like what we've done and that they're willing to help out. But yeah, it's, I think it's the, it's the passion for, for wrestling and comics and it kind of transcends promotions and promotional affiliations and whatever. It's just, and that's what we've, uh, we've managed to get, you know, everybody together on. Yeah, no, absolutely. So did you, so as you, like, as you said, like you, you met the, uh, the other contributors, like through comic conventions and whatnot, did you, contact them the same way you did Jerry Lawler or did you just talk to them at the, at the conventions themselves? Like, how did you get these guys together? Yeah, no, they would just, they would come by my table and check out the book. Um, you know, uh, hey, Rob bought my book at San Diego Comic Con one year. Uh, you know, Shane bought my book one year, you know, and I've just, I've just ended up meeting these people and then, you know, I'd see them, I'd see, you know what I mean? I'd see them a bunch of times and then, you know, you just get to you get to know people, and uh, they're all like, "Hey, I really like your stuff," and you know, let's see if we can uh, see if we can find it the audience that it deserves. Absolutely, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, as I said, I think I think this is going to be a uh, you know a great comic book, and I'm looking forward to uh, to reading it myself. So, so what are your what are your long term plans for the comic? Like, is this going to be a long running series? Is it going to be a one shot? Is it going to be, uh, you know, a four or five book series? Um, well, we, we released uh, our first, we released uh, some books, you know, originally um, that are collected into a trade now. Um, and this would be the second book. Okay. Um, you don't have to have read the first book to, to read the last territory. It's all. It'll all be uh, told in such a way that people could start there if they wanted, but that would be uh, our first trade was called a single step, and I think that's uh, you know it's a good story, and I think it's good you know it's supplemental material if uh, if people want to go that way. But uh, I want to just tell it as long as I can. I mean, the sto- I know what the ending is, and I can tailor it to you know I'll write it as long as sales warrant it. I mean. I'll take them all over the world. I'll take them to every, you know, corner of the wrestling world, every inch of the wrestling business. I mean, there's a million things you could explore. I mean, I could tell this, I could tell this story forever if I wanted to, but, uh, you know, I just want to write it as long as I can. Uh, as long as, uh, you know, I guess, uh, sales permit. So that's, uh, that's all we need is a little bit of support and, uh, you know, we'll, uh, We'll tell it as long as the the fan the fans want it. So, so obviously, from what you're saying, is that you want this comic to be a long running series, like much like much like Superman and, and Spider Man, as long as it, it can possibly go. Yeah, I mean, within reason, obviously. I mean, if there comes a point, you know, I mean, obviously, when you start writing things, sometimes things, you know, the, if you let the characters write the story, sometimes things take twists that you don't prepare for when you start writing it um but yeah i mean i would just i would just like to tell it i would like to explore every every bit of wrestling culturally and artistically and you know socially every everything i can um but like i said i've got you know i know what the ending is and you know i could end it after this if i have to (laughs) but i'd like to I think we got. Uh, I think we got a lot of good. You know, there's a lot of good stories to be told. So I hope people give us a chance. I'm sure people will. And uh, you would mention that you know you want to take this comic to all corners of the professional wrestling world. I think. I think this comic. 
I think in my in my opinion, it's going to do well in countries like Japan and in Mexico, especially Japan, because not only does Japan have a huge professional professional wrestling culture, but it also has a huge magna and comic book culture as well. So I you know I think that this comic is going to do well in Japan as also. Yeah, that's the hope. I mean, I just I just want people uh, I just want people to read it, you know, and uh, hopefully like it. I think for the most I think. You know, the reaction that we've had to the work that we've done so far has been, I mean, overwhelmingly positive. I mean, I'm not going to say that there hasn't been people who haven't liked it, but, I mean, no one's ever liked it or hated it to the point that they felt the need to tell me or, you know, write something online about it. I mean, I've never seen anything that's been anything but positive. I think the hardest thing is just sometimes people are just brand slaves, you know, and you know, it's not a Marvel comic or it's not a WWE comic book or whatever. So people are just, for whatever reason, people are less likely to give it a chance. But I think if people give it a chance, they will uh, they will be uh, pleasantly surprised. That's right. Yeah. Well, the, it's 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 great to hear that. You know, you know as well as I do that on how critical, uh, you know, professional wrestling fans are to the point where that they're called marks and whatnot. And it's really re- refreshing to hear that you haven't received any negative feedback for this comic so that really you know i think that really tells you something that i think fans in general are going to be you know going to be reading this comic and and um you know i think it's going to be uh i think it's going to be well received overall so have you considered other forms of uh, media for this comic like maybe uh you know a, a short film or a uh maybe a, a, an animated movie that sort of thing yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've talked to some people here and there about it. Um, you know, I think, you know, and I've had people come up to me and they're like, oh, this looks really cool, but I don't read comics. You know, I totally watched it. It was a TV show. But, I mean, unfortunately, in, in this day and age, you have to prove, you sort of have to prove marketability now. You know, it used to be that sort of comics were the, the place where original ideas would generate, but now you have to, so you have to be marketable, I guess, before you can... Uh, before you can go anywhere. So, you know what I mean? I guess if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see as a TV series, I mean, you kind of have to read the comic book first because that's, uh, that's how things get done in Hollywood. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, you take the, uh, some of the biggest, uh, movies of all, of all time have been comic books, Iron Man, Spider-Man, uh, obviously the Dark Knight series. Um, they've started it as comic books. So, um, I could, you know, myself, I could, I could see this, turning into a series, maybe, uh, something could be done on YouTube or maybe, uh, you know, a smaller, smaller independent scheme, maybe. Yeah, no, I, mean, I had somebody just recently contact me about doing a short film about it. I mean, honestly, like I love comics and that's really, that's really all that matters to me. I mean, obviously I wouldn't want to just, you know, sell out the name to somebody and let them do what they want. I mean, I'd like to keep some sort of integrity to the project, but I mean, honestly, like, I love comic books. I love the medium. I love there's things in comic books that you can do that you can't do anywhere else. And, you know, that's really the, that's really the priority. You know, I know some people get into, you know, they get into things cause they want to write a screenplay and they just, they feel like they have to do a comic book first or whatever. But I mean, if this was never anything but a comic book, I would be 100% over the moon about it. So, I mean, if it, if it, you know, by God, if it ever got licensed or whatever, that'd be great too. But, you know, as far, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I would be, you know, I'd be happy if it was just a comic book. Well, I think, you know, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is your vision. And, um, you know, as, as we've stated, there are, there still are lots of hardcore comic book fans, including myself. So, I mean, I, I, I highly doubt that, you know, uh, that, that, um, you know, that, uh, you know, this, this project is gonna, you know, it's not gonna, you know, I highly doubt it's not gonna take off because, you know, even, you know, even though I said that it's 2013, but, you know, there's still a lot of like hardcore comic book fans out there that I think will, you know, I think will enjoy this, this comic. So, uh, why, why the, the number of sixteen thousand um, dollars, you know what? What was the main reason why you guys decided to run with this with this uh, amount of money? Um, the way it breaks down, I mean, we have the 
only people that are that are getting paid on this book are full time artists. Um, you know, I have another job, and I'm okay with that. You know, but uh, you know, the artists it takes a little bit longer to draw a page of comics than it does to write it. So, you know, these guys can't have another job, so they need to you know they need to keep their electric on. So, um, we uh, we have a, we have our artists, we have a colorist, and a letterer. Um, so those are three full-time artists. Um, Jill Thompson is contributing some art to the book. Um, you know, and then, uh, so we're paying, we're paying for the art. Um, and then we have to pay to print the books. We have to pay to ship the books and, uh, you know, Kickstarter and Amazon take 8% of what you make. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, 16 is it might even be a little on the low side but that's you know that's still obviously a a number i I don't have to fund out of my pocket which would be okay (laughs) right well no absolutely i mean uh and sixteen thousand dollars seems more than reasonable be reasonable because i've seen kickstarter campaigns where you know people have been asking as high as 50s i've seen some that that asked for as much as a hundred thousand dollars and you have to sit back and you wonder where the hell is all this money going to, even though they have, you know, brief explanations of where the money goes. I mean, you know, 50 or a hundred thousand dollars is, you know, a lot of money, but $16,000 seems, you know, more than reasonable, you know, to, to get this great comic off the ground. And, you know, for what you just, what you just explained that, you know, that amount seems more than, more than fair. And it's a 150 page book. So it's essentially, it's going to be five chapters of Headlocked. We have three short stories, and then we have, you know, the pinups um, from the different wrestlers. You know, Jill Thompson is doing five chapter breaks. So, I mean, there's a good amount of content in there. Um, and the, the thing that um, that people should know is that the arts, uh, all the wrestler-generated content is Kickstarter exclusive. Um we're doing this as sort of a reward to people who are helping us out when we need it the most. Um, you know, this, this particular campaign is going to have more to do with how the, you know, the future of the book and where the book goes. I mean, the money to fund the creation of the book is good, but the more people that back us because they want to read the book, it gives us options, uh, you know, at the retailer and distribution level too, because we can prove marketability. You know, I sell, I sell a lot of books at conventions, but it's a cash business and you can't prove that to anybody. And this, this number, the number that we generate for our Kickstarter is the one thing I have that I can essentially, you know, I can go to a publisher, I can go to a distributor and I go to a retailer and say, this is, this is the audience for this book. And you might not believe it because there've been so many years of you know, awful wrestling comics. You might think the wrestling comics don't sell, but good wrestling comics sell, and here's the proof. Right. Absolutely. You know, I mean, um, um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, like, like you said, then, you know, like, you know, like I said, uh, you know, $16,000 seems like a more than, you know, more than reasonable amount. And, you know, you're, 89, 90% close to the goal. So, I mean, I have no doubt that, you know, within 30 days, um, you guys are going to hit the goal. So when somebody donates to the to this Kickstarter campaign, can you talk about what are some of the, the rewards that you're offering when people donate? Sure. Uh, we have, uh, we have tiers all the way up. Uh, I mean, you can donate any amount, um, from twenty from from uh, one to twenty dollars, the rewards are digital. Um, for twenty dollars, you can get the first book and the book that we're doing, and a preview book. So essentially, three hundred pages of content. Um, for uh, twenty five dollars, you get the book that we're doing mailed to your house. It's signed by me. Um, at thirty five, it's signed by Jerry. Um, we have some uh, higher tier rewards where you can get sketches from our artists, uh, sketches from Jerry. Um, we have a lot of we had a lot of rewards that you can be drawn into the book. Um, a good chunk of those rewards are gone. Um, we do have a few left. Um, I 
think at the hundred dollar level, maybe or hundred twenty five dollars, you can be drawn into the book and you get a a print of a uh, the page that you appear on. Um, we have uh, posters that are signed by most of the contributors. Um, just a variety of different things. So you know, if you like art, I mean, if you want a, a sketch by Jerry Lawler, which is kind of a you know once you know once in a lifetime kind of thing. I mean, we have that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff out there. I mean, honestly, if people people uh, I just want people to want the book. You know, if you if you bid, you know, and I'll take anything. Obviously, every little bit helps. But that twenty five dollar one is a nice one. You know, because I'm sending you the book, and that's really what we're here for. So, I mean, we're not uh, we're not greedy. I mean, it's essentially what you would pay on the. Uh, I think that's essentially what you would pay on a retail side for a book that size to have it shipped to you. And I think it's going to be a bit of a collector's item, hopefully, you know, because we're only going to print, you know, X amount of whatever's ordered because it's Kickstarter exclusive. So, Excellent. So there you, know, there you have it, wrestling fans. Uh, if you donate to the Kickstarter campaign for Headlocked, uh, The Last Territory, as Michael just said, you get a literally a plethora of different different options you can get. You know, if you're a, a, a comic, if you're a comic book fan, if you like art, you can have, just like Michael said, you can have print, a print copy. You can have a digital copy, whatever you like. You can have art auto, exclusively autographed by Jerry Lawler, by Christopher Daniels, Shane Helms. So this is this is really a you know a fantastic book that, as we said at the at the top of the show, I think will will draw in, you know, new fans. Uh, to pre- to, to uh, professional wrestling. So, if Michael, if you had one word, if you're only given one word to try and sell Headlocked, uh, what what would that word be? Uh, passion. It's a it's a pro- it's a story about passion. Um, it's created by creators that have passion for you know both storytelling mediums, wrestling and comics. Um, you know, I think that's what drives the book. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the sort of the, the things that Mike Hartman goes through sort of in his head are the same things that I've gone through trying to become a comic book writer. You know, I think the, the struggle for anybody trying to chase a dream is, is the same, you know, sort of mentally, you know, I think the, the things, you know, the, the more the specifics are sort of different, but yeah, I think, to me, it's it's passion. It's passion for wrestling, passion for comics, all of that. Excellent, and I think I think passion overall describes not only your project, but it describes professional wrestling fans and the business of professional wrestling. So I think that's a you know that's a, a great word, a great you know word to describe you know your project as well. So, well, wrestling fans, that's going to do it for this edition of Kayfabe Kickout Audio for August. 15, 2013 for kayfabekickout.com. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's uh, extremely appreciated. So this is the part where you plug away. Um, everything we have is uh, Headlocked Comic. It's our Facebook. It's our Twitter. It's our Instagram. It's uh, it's my Xbox gamer tag. Um, look me up. I'll play you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we know we're, I mean, I run most of it, but you know, everybody's open for questions. Um, but, uh, you know, feel free to check us out on any of those things. Our website is headlockcomic.com. You can get some of the stuff that we've produced earlier. There's also uh, reward tiers where you can get that too on the Kickstarter. But, uh, you know, yeah, just check us out and see what we're about. Um, we just started at the 30 day mark of our campaign. We just started dropping some, uh, some backer exclusive content. So, uh, We've got uh, some short stories, some character designs, and stuff that we're going to be putting into the into the Kickstarter uh, updates that are uh, backer specific. So, you know, the one thing I think people should know about Kickstarter is it doesn't take the money out until the end of the campaign. So, you know, if you're like, "Oh, I'm going to wait till I get my check," it doesn't matter. It's going to be deducted on September 13th. You know, as long as we hit our goal, it's going to be deducted on September 13th, one way or the other. So, you know. Don't wait to back us. Um, that's uh, you know every every dollar we get helps our positioning on the Kickstarter website and puts more eyeballs on our project. Excellent. 
And just like Michael said, wrestling fans, if you know, if you're if you're a fan of comics, if you're a fan of professional wrestling, these are two things that are, have come together. And this comic sounds like it's going to be fantastic, and I'm looking forward to reading it. So, thanks again, Michael, for being on the show. It's uh, it's extremely appreciated. Thank you so much for having me.